Good morning, everybody. I wanted to hop on here quick to show you guys a complete meal that comes from this cookbook right here, The Lodge. Let me read it to you. A skillet full of traditional Southern memories and recipes put out by the Lodge Cast Iron Company. So Warren had gotten this cookbook for me a number of years ago when I think he bought me uh, an enameled cast iron Dutch oven. And I've read the cookbook many a times, but yesterday was my day to go out deer hunting. And I knew that I wanted to stay out for the whole entire day, which is basically like 10 to 6 in the morning until five o'clock or something in the evening. So I took this along just so that I'd have something to kind of, um, you know, keep me company there. So anyway, I looked through the whole cookbook and I found a complete meal that I wanted to make and that's what I'm gonna do today. So let me just read to you what we're going to be making. Okay, so here's what we're gonna be making today. We're going to make Baron of Beef Au Jus. We're going to do Stella's Cranberry Salad country fried potatoes, fried green beans, and Aunt Cricket's sour cream cake. So those are all of the recipes that I found in there. Just one full complete meal for you. And I'm just gonna get started here at about 20 after seven in the morning and get started on the cake because I really want this sour cream cake to have plenty of time to cool so that it can, I mean, not like firm up, but I just find that a cake uh, is best if it has some time to just kind of like set before serving it. So let me show you what I have going. All right, I'm I'm foregoing the KitchenAid for this recipe, and I'll show you why in a minute. But what I have here, I have softened uh, one stick of butter, one stick of margarine, and then in my sifter, I have three cups of flour and then a quarter teaspoon each of baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So I have my oven preheated to 325. I have my bunt pan and I have this greased and very well floured. First into the bowl, I'm going to cream the butter, the margarine, and three cups, oh my goodness, three cups of sugar. Okay, next up I need six eggs, and I need to put these in one at a time and crack it off to the side. So what I'm gonna do is slide everything over this way, my creamed um, butter, margarine, and sugar, and then it says to completely mix the egg and then fold that into the um, creamed mixture. So let's see how that goes. Next up is two full tablespoons of vanilla. One thing when making a cake, it's important to always be scraping your bowl so that you can bring up any bits of, what was that noise? So you can just bring up any sugar or, you know, you just wanna really get everything well incorporated when doing a cake. So we're gonna sift in half of our dry ingredients. And then we need one cup of sour cream, which what I have left in here is one cup. I'm gonna scrape again. This is the second half of the dry ingredients and it does say now that I should beat this vigorously until smooth. All right, here goes.
it looks smooth to me. It actually came together a lot faster than I thought when I was reading through these directions and I had to crack each egg individually and beat it and fold it in. I thought, boy, that's going to take a long time, but actually it's coming together a lot faster than I had originally thought. It is now, though, for reference, it is about 7.35 now. I'm going to get this into my uh, bunt pan over here and we're going to bake it for one hour. It's in my Just like the Aunt Bridget's cake, we have another person here, Stella's Cranberry Salad. So I'm going to make this cranberry salad here. Let me show you, there we go, the recipe. And I'm doubling it. It just did not seem like that amount was going to be enough for our family. And so I have equivalent, whoops, Peter's in the kitchen. He's going to start making himself some breakfast. <laughs> Would you make would you make Maria a hash brown too? And so I have just a little bit over 24 ounces of cranberries. I'm going to run these through my food processor here, and then I'm going to combine them with sugar. I think I'm going to ease up on the sugar. It calls for one and two thirds cups, which means that I would have to put in, let's see, one and two thirds, and another one and two thirds is like three and a third. Did I do my math correct? That seems like a lot of sugar. And so I'm probably only going to put in about two cups of sugar into here. All right, so I only had one and a half cups of sugar. That's okay. I am going to be taking Joe to a dentist appointment here shortly. Uh, let's see. Actually, we have to leave in about an hour. And so I am going to pick up a few groceries. <laughs> Maria, I will show you how, okay? But you can get out your own hash brown and then I can show you how to make it, okay? So I am going to just pick up some sugar when I pick up those couple groceries that we need because we definitely need some milk. I'm going to just cover this. All right, the cake is out of the oven. It was in for an hour and 13 minutes. And look at this. This was a real bummer. Part of it tore when I... Um, you know, shook it out of the pan. Oh, I did numbers. have it sitting here for 15 minutes in the pan. Although, you know, it's not the biggest of deal because then it gave me a chance to at least try it. And it's good. The verdict is it is very, very good. It has a little bit of a pound cake type of a flavor. And um, yeah, so we're just going to let this sit cool. We have to get to a dentist Daddy, appointment and we'll be some. back later yeah. for it's the good. rest of the uh, oh, recipes. So Okay, it's one o'clock now. I'm going to start on the Baron of Beef Au Jus. And to do this, I had to put in about two tablespoons of oil. I'm actually doubling the recipe because the roasts that I'm using total about six pounds. So even though the recipe calls for four pounds of a roast, and it also calls, let's see, rump or sirloin tip, which would typically, both of those cuts, I believe, are a boneless cut. And I have two chuck roasts, which is not boneless. So maybe I still am only going to end up with four pounds of meat. I don't know. Anyway, I'm doubling the kind of like, I'm doubling the ingredients. Okay. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm warming up some oil in here because I'm going to sear the meat on all sides. So the best way to sear meat is to have your pan nice and hot with some oil, bacon grease, lard, whatever is your preference for that day, and then uh, put the meat in and then keep it uh, undisturbed. So you wanna just let it do its thing for, depending on the heat of your pan and everything, at least three, maybe even upwards of six minutes to a side, just to really, really get dark. Now obviously if you have your pan even hotter, going to be less. You don't want it to burn, but you do want to get, um, you're kind of locking in all that good flavor. So let me just give you a quick look at what's in here. So I have both of my beef roasts in here, and then the recipe called for um, Lipton onion soup mix pouches, and bay leaves, and chicken broth. So 
which if I was to do something like this, I think I would naturally do beef broth, but I was just going with the recipe and it does say chicken broth. So I have my roasts in here, I have everything in here. I'm gonna cover this, I'm gonna put it in the oven. I have it preheated to 275 degrees and it needs to go for four hours. So I do think halfway through, I'm gonna pull it out and I'm going to turn the meat over just to make sure that all of the meat um, gets down in that good juice. The nice thing about these, uh, like a cast iron Dutch oven, is that you can use it on the stove top, and then I'm just gonna move this straight into the oven. And you know, it's just one less dish that gets dirty, and that is always a win in my book. So let me get this going, and it's 1.30, so that means by 5.30, uh, this part of supper should be done. I'm really looking forward to it. I want this to be registering about medium to medium well on my meat thermometer. So I did put my uh, strainer over top of a bowl, and I am letting the um, sugared ground cranberries just juice and drip. It, the recipe actually, I when I just read it again, it said it was supposed to, that you were supposed to put the ground cranberries in a strainer or colander and then sprinkle the sugar over the top and then just let it drip all day for eight hours. I actually had it in a bowl and I just started to let it juice that way and now I have it dripping. And you know what it says? It says you should discard that juice. That to me seems like <laughs> like a sin. So we're actually gonna drink that juice, of course. Um, and so I'm just gonna let this continue to drip as the day goes on. I did get my grapes going, so I have two cups, because like I said, I'm doubling this recipe. So I have two cups of grapes, and now I have some pecans here and some pecans here. I need two cups of chopped pecans. I'm gonna put those in the, this bowl and just kind of set this aside so that later on, all I'm gonna have to do, stir in the cranberries, stir in the whipped cream. I have the whipped cream sitting right here so that it can start to thaw because it was in the freezer. And that is gonna be it for that salad. So I know I've made something before like this salad and I think it might've been called Cranberry Waldorf and it had apples in it and nuts and I believe grapes too and the cranberries, it was very similar. Um, but it had a little bit more um, variety of fruits in it. I think it might've even had some um, pineapple tidbits in it as well. So anyway, this is a real base recipe and you can really change it up based on the nuts or you know the different fruits that you want, but the key ingredient is the sugared cranberries. <laughs> now I think I just kind of have the rest of the afternoon um, to continue with school and things like that with the kids and I will be back when it's time to number one, get the roast out and then number two, just a second, Peter. And then number two, I'm going to have to fry up the bacon for the fried green beans and chopped potatoes. But I'm not gonna start that, all of that, until probably about 4.30, okay? How are you doing? We got the mullet craze has bit. <laughs> Peter the other day was like, I want a mullet. So I cut up his hair here on the sides and shortened it all up. What do you think? I like it. You like it? <laughs> I just pulled the roast out of the oven and let's see, I thought I was gonna come check on it at 3.30, it's 4.30 now. It does technically have one more hour to go and I know I had mentioned earlier that I thought that you know this would probably bake until it was around like maybe 1.45. <laughs> it's like registering like 200 degrees. <laughs> yep, right there, 200. So um, it's definitely done. And I think it's very, very tender. I mean, this I feel like is making a better roast than any roast I've ever done in the crock pot, quite honestly. And so I'm just gonna flip this over, make sure that all of this meat right here gets into the juice, and then I'm gonna turn the oven down, maybe even off for this last hour. Uh, no, I'm gonna turn it down to 200 just to keep it warm and I'm gonna flip it over and let it just sit there until it's time for supper. And I think I'm gonna peel a little piece off of here right now. Let's see how that tastes. Ooh. Mm. Oh, that is good. Good flavor. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over and stick it back in. The ground cranberries and sugar have been dripping and dripping and dripping and there's all of that juice there. So now I'm going to pour 
this or you know kind of mix it in here I'm definitely glad that I doubled this recipe because I just feel like this is something that Warren is really going to like a lot. And one recipe of it just did not sound like it was going to be enough for us. This is going to be good. And I, yes, stirring this up now, I know I've made something like this with apples. So this will be a nice change with the grapes. Oh, I'm looking forward to the supper. I do feel like I've been making this on and off all day. And I feel like that because I have been. But sometimes it's fun to just kind of try some new recipes, get in the kitchen, make some things that are extra special. This is delicious. I just took a bite. This is so good, you guys. Um, I would recommend this as a nice, this would be a great Thanksgiving addition to the dinner table, especially if... Um, Can I try it? You want to try some? Just wait, let me get you a spoon, okay? Um, okay. If you're not really into maybe the cranberry sauce, but you still want something cranberry at the table, this would be perfect. Okay, we're gonna get the first taste tester here. Well, besides me. Tell us what you think about it. Is it something you like? Mm -hmm. What is it? It's a cranberry salad. Don't put the spoon back in there. <laughs> what do you think of it? Mm -mm. No, you don't like it? Mm Okay, we've got a lot of cast iron going here. I have some bacon going in here. As soon as this, it needs to get a lot crisper than that. And then I'm going to put in the green beans um, and fry those around until they're done and probably salt and pepper them. And then I do need to salt and pepper as well the potatoes. I did just put one small onion in there. Um, yeah, and kind of the the trick too with um, fried potatoes, just kind of let them sit undisturbed for a while so the bottoms get nice and crispy. And the cover is going to help to steam them and get them softer. I don't have a perfect cover for my cast iron, but this works out okay. And that just helps to get them kind of soft uh, because I'm starting with raw potatoes. Typically when I make um, like country fried potatoes, what I do is start with already baked potatoes or um, like a boiled potato or something if I make some in advance and then I have some leftover. Or even baked potato works great. And then I slice that and then fry that. It, it They fry up a little bit faster for sure because they're already cooked. You're just trying to brown them. But I wanted to go just like the uh, recipe said here, so I'm starting with the raw potatoes, which I have done in the past. It's just not typically my preferred method because it does take a little bit longer, but okay. Uh, the Hunters, Maria was just announcing to so, me. Who's here? Every, everybody. They're all back? Yes, they all came in between you. Okay, awesome. And so I don't know what. Nobody got anything. Nobody got anything, okay. Yeah. I don't Did know. anyone see anything? I don't know. You don't I know. Asked you. Oh, you no, just asked Joe? Okay, no. so Joe was hunting Joe with one. Dad. Uh, didn't so, see anything. Okay, so I do still want to put a glaze on this cake here. I see that someone's been picking at it even more, but I think everybody's just like, wow, that to them I think this looks kind of fancy. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna put a little glaze on that. And things are coming together quite nicely, I'd have to say. And it smells really, really good. Hamburgers. But your hunters are back? Mm -hmm. He said hamburgers. Hamburgers, no. Every single recipe is honestly brand new. Oh. Recipe. So we're all so, guinea pigs or what? You guys are the guinea pigs. No, let Bob own them be the guinea pigs. Sure. Okay. So we have the whoops, whoops, whoops. Grab that. Grab it, Maria. 
Hey, and we have the cranberry turkey. salad. We will cut the cake kind of after we eat the food, the meal part. Ah, There's potatoes no, over here, Peter. <laughs> We're not cutting cake first. There's potatoes and Stop green talking. beans, fried green beans and fried potatoes here too. Joe, come here. Is that bacon beans? No, it's they not. are called fried green beans. This is out of the Southern no, Skillet Cookbook. Well, I'll be darn from down south, y'all. Are you gonna? Is this meal gonna make you speak with a southern accent? <laughs> so right here we got cast iron fried bacon fried bean stuff. Look at it. No, it's not. Everything's better with bacon. No, it's not. Yes, it is. We also got cast iron fried flat potatoes. 